So let us define our web deployment.yaml file first of all. So if you remember, we have discussed about uh, the deployment uh, that it contains information about the image to be used and uh, uh, detail the number of uh, replicas we need and the components, labels of the ports and uh, ports to be exposed and all, right? So for this uh, scenario, for this application, we will be defining the deployment as follows. So uh, just like any other YAML file for the Kubernetes resources, the first thing uh, we should do is API version, colon, apps slash v1. So it is dependent upon the uh, version we are using the deployment. So these details can be uh, seen as per the version of the Kubernetes we are using and uh, in the corresponding documents of the official docs, right? So uh, API version, and then the kind is deployment. Okay, so the kind indicates what kind of uh, Kubernetes resource are we defining right now. Okay, and then uh, the metadata. So under the metadata, we have to write the name of the uh, deployment. So let us name it as web hyphen deployment. Okay, and then the specifications spec. Okay, so under specifications, let us uh, write the replicas, which is three, and then the template. So this template indicates the uh, template of the pods, right? So how the pods should be acting, like based on uh, which image should they run and all these. So we are defining the template of the pod pods uh, so there will be three pods basically and we are defining the template of the pods okay so the metadata for the pods sorry metadata for the pods is labels component is wish list app Okay, so if you remember this labels component uh, part is used to group uh, those pods under a particular deployment. Okay, and also to, uh, and also for the service to discover these pods. Okay, so based on this, uh, if you remember the label selector components, we will be uh, defining the labels under the specs of the deployment and the selector component of the service will be able to find which pods it should uh, connect in order for it to be able to enable these pods to be able to be communicated. So if you remember, we have discussed about the label selector uh, uh, label selector concept where we define the labels of the pods under the specs of the deployment and uh, finally we will also write the selector uh, lastly in this file something like this selector match labels match labels and uh, component which is the same as this, okay? So this is the way we are telling that these uh, all the pods with these labels should be deployed uh, together as uh, one deployment, okay? And also in the service uh, file, which we will be going to um, configure later, it also has a similar selector uh, component, which has this particular uh, component name, using, the, using which it will be able to uh, establish communication for these pods. The service is basically to enable communication for pods, right? So uh, the service will be able to enable the communication for all those pods whose name is uh, the same as its selector component. Okay, so we will be writing that later in the web service file. So for now, uh, after this, after this labels component, the next thing is the specifications of the pods. So remember, the this specification is for the template uh, deployment, and this specification, which is under the template, is for the pods. Okay. Then containers. Obviously, the containers are run by pods. So containers name hyphen space name 
so we can give the give a name for our um, container so wish list app container and then the image which we want to use so if you remember the image is uh, something which we have deployed on our docker hub right so if you remember go to docker hub so so this is the one which we have created previously but now uh, that is not going to be the case we will be defining uh, this image name uh, later because the image is nothing but the docker image of our application right so this thing this app folder okay so uh, for this application we are creating the image based on this docker file if you remember okay so uh, based on these uh, th based on these steps we will be creating the docker image and we will be uh, we have pushed that image to docker hub for this application right so now we want as discussed previously we want to make some changes to our application as in we want to delete this line and come up with another way where we don't need to expose any sensitive information like this uh, but we will be using some environment variables which we will be defining in the deployment configuration files uh, shortly right so that means we are making some changes to our application so the old image will not be usable in this scenario so we we need to use the updated application so if we want to use the updated application we want to create a new image for our updated application and uh, create uh, after cre cre building that new image we want to push that image to the docker hub and from the docker hub we will be making our kubernetes to pull that image so uh, why because as discussed previously uh, kubernetes will not be able to build images on its own it will need to uh, access the images hosted remotely like on docker hub or uh, some other online registries for images right so that is the reason so we are going to change this application and use that updated application for that we we should uh, create a new image based on these changes of this application and push that image to the docker hub and then only we will be writing the name of that image over here okay so for now just uh, uh, leave it like this so we will have to change this part later okay and then the ports which we want to uh, expose that is uh, container port which is 80 okay so this is the same as uh, these things previously which we have used okay so if you see our docker run dot aws dot json which we have used previously to up uh, to deploy this multi-container application onto Elastic Beanstalk. So for our, uh, for our web application, this is the port which we have exposed, right? So similarly, we are basically giving all the details about the ports, images to be used, everything uh, over here, okay? So ports uh, is over and then comes the env. So now we are going to define the environment variables. So just like we discussed previously, we don't want to expose all this information here. So rather uh, than doing this here, we will be writing some of the information. Uh, we will be writing this information in this environment variables. Okay. So we will be creating the environment variables and we will be giving the values. Okay. So um, name of the PostgreSQL database and the Redis host name and the port and all right so let us uh, write the name of the environment variable to be redis host redis host and the value is redis service okay so this redis service is something which we will be creating later okay it is just like a kubernetes service that we are going to define later for the redis application container okay 
so uh, remember this and then the next one is we also need to expose the port right so name redis port and value is 6379 in quotations okay so again uh, this is uh, very similar to the ones which we have defined over here port okay uh, so redis connection environment variables are over next we shall define the environment variables related to the postgresql database name postgres host and the value is the postgres service Okay, so very similar to the Redis service, we will be defining the Postgres service in its corresponding YAML configuration because uh, basically we will be creating three containers, one for the web application, one for the uh, Redis and one for PostgreSQL, just like uh, we have done previously for this using Docker Compose, right? So this is one, uh, sorry, this is for one. This is one service and the DB is another service. DB service, Redis service and web service, right? Because uh, we have created three containers there. So very similarly, three we will be hosting three applications, which is like multi-container application. And for that, we will be writing the deployment YAML configuration files and the service YAML configuration files. Okay, now, so we have defined the host. Now, very similarly, we will have to do for the username, password, port, and the database, right? So let us do one by one. So the username is name, postgres user, value, hello flask, Next name, Postgres port value 5432 within quotations. Next name, Postgres DB. value hello flask db next the password so pg password value now so the environment variable is pg password. Then we can't write the password here, right? So we want to encode the password in a secure manner and then only uh, refer that encoded secure password over here in some way, okay? So for this, Kubernetes provides us the secret object, okay? So let us learn about that first. 